Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program with myself, Martin Blackham, and with my wife, Natalie Blackham. Great to have you with us. Uh, we're doing today a special Israel First update. In other words, we're doing a bit behind the scenes. We're doing some news from Israel, talking uh, about uh, viewers' feedback and uh, also looking at some projects that we're doing with the, with the program. So great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, you can always email us. We love to receive your emails at info at israelfirst.org. And uh, so it's great to be with the viewers, isn't it, Natalie, to be mm -hmm. together uh, to share some of the things that we're doing and some of the projects. Um, we um, would like to uh, involve you and to uh, have your feedback. Uh, and try, we'll try and squeeze in some letters and uh, emails if we can. I'm just going to squeeze in one email today. Well, it was actually a Facebook post, uh, Natalie, and that was uh, we had that from. Uh, it's uh, from Victor, and he says, uh, "A good day, sir, and madam. I'm Victor from Swaziland. I'm watching your show when you were talking about Israel and the language from Swaziland in Africa. So we welcome our, our viewers from Africa. Great to have you with us." and to, uh, to know that you're interested in understanding about Israel uh, and the Jewish roots and to, and, and to hear what's happening with the news in Israel. And Victor goes on, he says, uh, I'd love to visit Israel and uh, also learn the Hebrew language. And Victor says he's watching uh, the program on DSTV. So obviously we're on, on that channel. So this is interesting that you say that because we know how, import how the Hebrew language is getting so important. And not only for the Jewish people, but like all the people around. And I can see from different outlets that people are really interested with that. So we started to learn a few years ago and we're still learning. But we, I tell you, the Hebrew language really opened something uh, to our understanding of who, more, who God is more. And and have depth and more intimacy with him, with the word, which is interesting because, again, it makes us more uh, connected with the Jewish people. So like we are doing also some Bible studies, Jewish and Christian, which is like something that's really new. And, uh, and at the end of the program, don't miss it, but at the end of the program, we're doing inserts now mm -hmm. on every Israel First television program, and you'll be able to see this. Uh, we're doing, Natalie's doing uh, a, a... We go through the uh, Aleph Bet, through the... Aleph Bet is like the, the Aleph Hebrew alpha, alphabet. Alphabet, exactly. But I wanted to read something also today for you uh, to encourage you, and it's from the Psalm uh, one. So I will. I'm going to read it in um, in in English first, okay? Um, but just one verse because it's it's long. I mean, it's not a very long psalm, but it's. I want just to pick up on something. So it's written, maybe we start from the, the, first, um, the first verse. The praise of man are that he walk not in the counsel of the wicked and stood not in the path of the sinful and sat not in the session of the scorners. But his desire is in the Torah of Hashem. So when we say Torah, it's written law a lot of time in our translation, but it's not law. Torah means teaching. It means uh, the understanding of the way of God in one way, if we want to say it like that, okay? So, and in his Torah, so again, this teaching, the understanding of the ways of God, he meditated day and night. Now, when I started to read it here in Hebrew, when it's written, and in his Torah, it's not, it's, it's not written just Torah, it's written Torah too which means that the Torah, the teaching, because he meditates on it, is becoming his. Torah to is like, is to so say Torah. So the person is um, um, absorbing the word exactly. themselves. And when you, when you meditate on it, when you eat the word of God, because meditate is also chewing, is like, is becoming yours. And oh. so this is beautiful. And it's written, it's, it's written in Hebrew, you can read it, Torah to is yours. So, so this is something to uh, for the viewers to chew, for you to chew on today right. to have a think about uh, and uh, don't miss Natalie's special segment for on every program now. So you'll be able to watch those uh, segments at the end of each uh, of the Israel First television programs, which are looking at the uh, the land, the people, and the language, and uh, they'll be able to see that every week. So tell your friends, and um, we, we, as, as I said before, you know we love to hear from you. 
Uh, you, we um, appreciate your emails. That's info at israelfirst.org. You can also write to us. Uh, our address is, um, at, uh, will be on the screen as well. And uh, you can also, um, face, we're on Facebook as well. So there's lots of ways of communicating with us. Great. And that's always very encouraging for us because uh, we want you to be involved with this. It isn't just us, but we appreciate you as the viewers that you are involved with this and involved with the project of the Israel First television program and being able to bring you programs from Israel, not, and not just from Israel, but programs from Jerusalem. Uh, with rabbis, with uh, spokespeople, with all sorts of people. We get into the studio, people who can speak about what, what it's like to live in the land of Israel, people who can speak. We had uh, Aaron uh, Leibovitz on who from the Jerusalem City Council uh, speaking about the work of Jerusalem. And the thing is, so you can, you can just, if you miss a program and you want to watch it, and especially also because we do the letters now, you can go on our website, israelfirst.org, and you go, you click there on the YouTube, and you can pick up the program that you missed, and you know you can just carry on. And we are so happy to make you being able to learn, you know, of the Hebrew language and what's happening in Israel. So this is great. Do you have I'm some news for us today? I do, but I'm just going to say one more thing, Natalie, and that is that if you would, if the viewers, if you would like to get involved with the program. Uh, as well as emailing, letting your friends know about the program, letting other people know about the program. You can actually support the work financially, and that's also a very important way. Uh, and in fact, we were talking, I think we were talking about this, or you were talking, on one of the programs, you were talking about the offerings, people bringing them into Israel, bringing them to the temple. So it's another way of doing that. Um, you may say, well, I don't know how to do that. Don't worry. You can just contact us, uh, email us, or write to us and we'll let you know how you can do that. You can also use PayPal, everything's on the website, how you can support us. And we've got some exciting projects, haven't we, for the studio? Yes, because like now we're speaking together, but we love to have a panel where we, have, we know more people and, and there is some serious subjects sometimes that we want to tackle. And, and it's nice to have different people, different opinions and be able to to, to have the view of different people. So for that, we need some more cameras, we need some more chairs, we need to sort out a bit the, the studio. And uh, if you want to help, because you really appreciate to have news and, and see what's happening here in Israel, you can just contact us and, uh, and help um, us. And thank you very much for that. And it's so easy with PayPal and, uh, and the different means they can support us. So, you know, it's really easy to get involved and every gift really does make a difference and thank you so much for your support because of your support that we're able to do the program today. So one of the things we like to do and we're getting straight onto that uh, next Natalie is to look at the newspapers, do a newspaper review uh, and talk a bit about what's happening in the news in, in Israel. Uh, one of the disclaimers that I should make is that um, by the time the program goes out on air Things may have changed, so this is obviously uh, the news as we're speaking today as we come into the studio. So, uh, the first story, this is uh, from the um, Jerusalem Post, and uh, this, is the head this is one of the headlines, all sorts of um, news stories, but uh, one of the headlines is, All hospitals in besieged Aleppo shut down by heavy bombing, shelling. All hospitals in Aleppo, that's in um, uh, Syria across the border from us. Um, and you know that one of the interesting things is, um, Natalie, is that um, it's only eight hours from where we're sitting today mm -hmm. by road, if, in, if very much quicker, obviously, by aeroplane. But it's, uh, you know, we can literally, not so easy it's now, next, it's, it's next the country door. next door to yeah. us. And the border is, uh, you can go to and visit the border. When you come to Israel, you can visit the border with Syria. So this isn't... Um, a problem that's a long way away. Now, we understand the background, and this is something you must understand, is that obviously there are rebel fundamentalists and the Syrian government are trying to control the country. So there's, it, it isn't such an easy story as people imagine, but it's very serious that there's all this warfare going on uh, the side of the Syrian border. And it's been for a few years now, this is just, Horrible when you if you think about the reality of living in this you know in this kind of environment all the time. 
And uh, you, the, the interesting thing is, is that it's, it's also an issue for the Israeli um, military because they have to protect the border, uh, the northern border, with, with both Syria and Lebanon in the north. The, the, we'll show you a map on the screen and you can see that um, it's the, the Golan Heights and it's right next to it is where uh, there's some, been some, uh, some issues and indeed some um, uh, shooting across the border and r rockets have been fired across the border and indeed uh, weapons have been fired. So this is a very serious issue, isn't it, Natalie? That, uh, that's going on in um, uh, there. So that, that's uh, that one. Now we've also... Uh, looking at uh, this, this Jerusalem post, this is uh, uh, a story says the president of Israel went to visit India mm -hmm. and we can see there's a picture of him um, visiting uh, a war memorial in India and uh, so he, the president of, in, of Israel was in India. Uh, so it was amazing, you know, President of in Israel going to visit uh, India because it was he was doing some security agreements and some trade agreements and uh, this is very important and uh, I know there are viewers you're watching in India so a very important uh, piece of news that mm -hmm. Israel is building more links uh, with India and uh, with trade. Mm -hmm. And do you know there is students from India quite a lot coming to study here in Israel. So there is people who choose Israel to do the studies. Um, and now I've got uh, the Jerusalem Post and it's got uh, Trump taps loyalists for top jobs in national security. And uh, one of the interesting things we've just, as we've come into the studio, um, uh, Donald Trump won the election of the, uh, to be the president of the United States. And um, it's been a very big thing for Israel because a lot of the people for the uh, Jewish communities, a lot of the people um, who, work, who are working behind the scenes with the United States are very pleased because he's more favorable towards Israel and he's going to be doing things for the Jewish communities. And one of the issues is the building of houses in the Jewish communities. And, um, um, Bennett, who's in the, uh, Naftali Bennett, who's in the uh, government has been saying that he's very pleased that um, Donald Trump is there because it would have been very tricky for Israel had Hillary uh, Clinton been uh, um, elected. Uh, you're right and, and I heard also from uh, the MK, the member of the parliament, uh, Yehuda Glick, that also things was easier now on the Temple Mount and this seems to say that is because uh, Trump is coming into power in, in the UN United States and so because of that um, they don't have the pressure even so much on the Temple Mount, which is interesting. It's, we're going to see. We're going to see what what's will happen. And uh, I've got uh, here the front lines, which is out of the um, uh, Jerusalem Post. And if I can just open it up, it says Israel Startup City. I don't know if you've seen this article, Natalie. Very interesting. Uh, it says the Jerusalem Development Authority is committed to strengthening the high-tech uh, in the capital and we've got uh, the Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu with um, the Mayor of Jerusalem and uh, Barkat who uh, talking about uh, Jerusalem as a startup capital as a startup city in in um, Israel now we've talked about this um, before that Israel is a startup nation uh, so what what is a startup nation well Basically, it's companies that really start from scratch. In other words, with one or two, uh, sometimes um, uh, people, they'll mm -hmm. start. And they have innovative ideas and suddenly it goes into the market. And uh, before, it's always been Tel Aviv has been the startup place that, uh, that um, the people have been starting uh, the businesses in, in industrial estates behind the scenes. And, um, you know, basically, Israel is a startup nation. It's known as, uh, for that, that people are in innovating here. And, uh, you know, the invention of the antivirus was uh, that, you, that many of you will be using at home on your computer. That was invented in Israel. Um, uh, the mobile phone technology that's been invented in Israel. And also, you know, all sorts of companies, Intel, 
And, uh, and which is interesting because, you know, we spoke also about this uh, new train who is coming from, uh, who are going to Tel Aviv, Ben Gurion and Jerusalem. So again, this train is very, very important because it will help to, to have trade between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is going to have uh, a much more um, important um, role in, in, well, in the life of Israel yeah. and in the life of the, all the people around the world. Which is interesting because like last week we had uh, Rabbi uh, Aaron Levovich, which is a city councillor. And when you think about, you know, you can be from a city and being part of the government of the city and is an important role. But when you know, and a lot of the Jewish people have already this understanding from the Torah, from the Bible, then Jerusalem is going to be the center of the world, really. And you, you remember this very old map um, where J Jerusalem was the center. People knew that, and we just kind of forget that, and, and it's coming back into, this, uh, into our consciousness. And, uh, and we are seeing it in our days. So Jerusalem is like the treasure. So many things is happening, and we see it in front of our eyes. I think it's, it's just tremendous. And uh, you know that um, the Jerusalem Post talking uh, about what's happening in the news at the moment, it says, um, Lieberman, this is uh, uh, the headlines, it says, Lieberman, partial building may be the best approach in dealing with Trump. If we get permission to build inside the settlement blocks, we need to grab it with both hands. Now, um, one of the guests we had on the program uh, was Alan Baker, mm -hmm. uh, who is the, um, who was formerly the ambassador to Canada for Israel. An amazing program that he was talking to us about the legality of Israel being in what the media or what the BBC or uh, CNN called the West Bank, but it's actually Judea and Samaria. And he was talking about the fact that it's uh, legally, according to the League of Nations and the United Nations, was placed in the hands of Israel and has never been, um, you know, it's a piece of land that has, uh, was occupied by Jordan, not by Israel. So when Israel took it, retook it, mm -hmm. then legally that it was it came back into the hands of the Jewish people. So the fact that there, and it's all the biblical cities as well, that's the other thing he was explaining, that uh, Hebron, Jerusalem, and Shiloh. Uh, Shiloh in the north uh, are all the famous biblical cities. You can open your Bible and you can see them written there. And that's the, the, the areas where there's so much battle for uh, in the media. And of course, the other thing you need to remember is that the media is biased against uh, Israel, and so we'll present, we'll, we'll not talk about any of these biblical cities, mm -hmm. and if they do, they will mention them as uh, where Palestinians live. And um, so he was explaining all of that. So that was a, a really very important program. So this, the building in the building of uh, properties and houses in the land of Israel is amazing that they'll be able to rebuild. You know that they'll be able to start building again, and uh, which you may hope, not, hope, people might not know, Natalie, with the freeze that there's been a freeze and um, so we're all hoping... You hope mean a freeze, f not called the freeze for buildings. Right, for there's building. been a, a suspension of, of building projects in, in the Jewish communities in um, Judea and Samaria, mm -hmm. uh, enforced by really by the Americans. So uh, things may, may change. So we will see, we will let you know as things develop. And maybe you can let us know if you know things as well. When you speak about what's happening now, the very interesting thing is like they are finding also archaeological sites and they are finding amazing things. And which is also very interesting, you know, it's not just archaeologists who are doing the work, but they are using students and they want also to put the student, like real students, not students uh, of like a university, but students who are school and they want them to connect uh, with the land. And so now they are using schools uh, to come and dig, and they, they are like interacting with, the, with scholars and with uh, archaeologists. And this week, they have found something amazing, which was uh, like an old pottery piece, but like beautiful one. And uh, we're just showing it to you. 
And when with artifacts. Yeah, artifacts. And uh, this was like just students from a school, and they were they were finding things. And the last day, suddenly they find this statue on a pottery. And uh, one say one student was there and uh, say suddenly I saw many archaeolo archaeologists and important people arriving who were examining examining and admiring something that was uncovered in the ground. They immediate, immediately call all of us to look at this amazing statuette and explain to us that this is an extremely ra rare discovery and one that is not encountered every day. It was exciting to be part of an excavation whose artifacts will be displayed in the museum. So you can, you know, it's like the old and the new. You see students who are living here, the people of uh, Israel coming back into the land, and suddenly they find things very old, and they were explaining about this pottery. That's what, what Alan, Alan Baker, Ambassador Alan Baker, was saying when he came on into the studio and was talking with us. And he was saying that uh, we could dig in the garden and find stuff. So, you know, this is, this is being in Israel. You know, it's an ancient yes. land, and it, the land of the Bible, and um, you never know what you're going to, uh, uh, to find. Well, um, I've just got one... Uh, final story I'm going to try and uh, squeeze into the program and um, uh, it says uh, this is from the uh, Jerusalem Post again and by the way uh, the reason I use it it's such a such an important newspaper for the English speaking community in Israel and um, you can also go online if you you know you want to follow up some of the stories that we've uh, covered today on the Israel First program then you just uh, go on the internet and look at uh, you can go on to the Jerusalem Post website Okay. This is a freebie. <laughs> <laughs> for them, yes. If they're watching, uh, then that's a mention for them. So it's, uh, it says, what's behind the rising population, uh, sorry, what's behind the rising popularity of Jewish education in the United Kingdom? It says, the population, popularity of Jewish education in Britain has risen dramatically over the last 20 years, according to a report from the Institute for Jewish Policy Research. The number of Jewish children in Jewish schools has nearly doubled since the mid-1990s. And it goes on to talk about the continuing growth and demand for uh, Jewish education in, in schools. So, you know, it really is uh, interesting that the Jewish people are looking to go back to uh, Jewish education, uh, you know, because... One of the problems has been, uh, as the Jewish people have uh, gone into the nations, that they've assimilated, that they've become part of that nation. And secularism. And uh, of course, and people have turn, uh, turned away from the Bible and have gone into secular education. So this is a very important story, a very important development. And part of that uh, Jewish education is, of course, the, the Aliyah, the return of the Jewish people according to the Bible. Uh, to come back to the land of, uh, of Israel. So okay. this is very interesting, Martin. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting. So thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, don't forget uh, to email us. We'd love to hear from you. Info at israelfirst.org. Uh, you can also write to us. Be great to receive your letters as well. And uh, from Natalie and myself, Shalom Shalom from Jerusalem. Shalom dear friends, wonderful, we are going to speak today about the 10th letter of the Aleph Bet and the letter is called Yud and is the smallest letter in the Aleph Bet and it's interesting, it was, you know when Jesus speaks like everything of the Torah will be left and like the smallest letter Yod, Yud was said there so this was in Matthew 5 so this letter also speaks about humility, which is very interesting because you have to acquire wisdom and first you have to develop humility so that you are open to the truth and you are not trying to constantly seek to be right and to, to give your own opinion. So this is very important. The world was made, created by God with the name with, the, with two letters, the He that we already spoke about and the Yod. And these two letters, when you put them together, is Yah from the name Yehovah. Yah, so it's the Yod and the He together. And, and the teaching is like the Yod is for the world to come, which is called Olam Abba. 
And the He is for the world who is now this world, which is Olam Haze. And do you remember we spoke already last, last time about Ze, which means this. So Olam Haze means this world. Okay? So another name also is very interesting with the letter we start by Yud is our hand, which is Yad. And so we learn about the hand of God. The right hand of God is for mercy and the left hand of God is for justice. So it's important to know that. And it's interesting that Yud is also 10 and we have two hands with five fingers, which makes 10. There is also something else which is very interesting and we can read in Deuteronomy 5.16 when it's written, Honor your father and your mother and your, your days of your life will be lengthened. And so this is important to see and we need to be able to give like this, this uh, important uh, commandment to honor our parents and our mother. We need to convey that to our children and, and Family is so important that we need to be able to explain with the word of the Torah, with the word uh, in, in the scriptures, and we can see the importance of how we are and how we act. So today we learn about the letter Yud. We spoke about Yad also. So you've learned some beautiful things again today. And we really serve a magnificent God. It's amazing that His scripture is so beautiful. And now from me, see you next time. Hi, we hope you enjoyed that segment and uh, we'll be putting those on at uh, the end of uh, every program, won't we, Natalie? Um, don't forget you can visit the website www.israelfirst.com Org. Email us at info at israelfirst.org and don't forget we are the program that looks at the land, the people and the language. Music